morning. It's August 5th today, and we're beginning Ezra. And uh, I love the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, um, partly because of their unique literary style. We have um, historical documents that are included in this, oftentimes written by people who are not believers, who are part of the pagan empire of Persia, and, uh, and others who are trying to um, reduce the effectiveness of Israel as they come back from exile. Um, but one of the things I find amazing is the way that it starts with this, this decree of Cyrus, which is also mentioned at the end of Second Chronicles. But I wanted to read that, um, the one from Ezra here with you this morning. It says, In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, which is amazing. God is, again, working um, all of human history, all of the major events of the world, according to her, his purposes in, in order to fulfill the promises made to Jeremiah. The Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, a pagan king who would not have known God except for the uh, introduction of him uh, by, by the exiles. Um, Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and also to put it in writing. This is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem and Judah and build the temple of the Lord the God of Israel, the God who is in Jerusalem, and may their God be with them. And in any locality uh, where survivors may now be living, the people are to provide them with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem. This seems almost impossible. In fact, for many years of uh, human history, world history, um, in the last number of centuries, people said that this was impossible, that this is not something that Cyrus actually did or would have done until they found the Cyrus Cylinder and other things like that that um, Cyrus himself had written and placed in the cornerstones of buildings, um, kind of like time capsules, so that we could then dig them up centuries later and see that this was indeed his policy to repatriate the peoples that had been brought into exile um, by his um, predecessors, in fact, before the Persian Empire even existed um, during Babylon and Assyria. And so we see that this actually did happen in history, just as Ezra records, um, even though it sounds impossible, difficult to believe for sure, that uh, a pagan king would say, let me um, use my resources to build a temple for the God of heaven who has um, put me in control for these purposes that I might fulfill his his designs. And so that's exactly what happens. And I love that Ezra shows that history, that it's been written down this way for many centuries, and that now archaeology is proving that what Ezra wrote was actually true, even though it's nearly unbelievable. So that's fun stuff.